In January, Colonel Bowman called me and reminded me he was available to speak in Gainesville. We called the Florida Free Speech Forum, and they agreed to book him for February 14th, Valentine's Day. The Patriots is the national veterans organization, nonpartisan. That means uh, veterans of all stripes. Patriotism is not limited to one political party or another. Sure. And uh, right here is a uh, DVD, a Blueprint for Truth, from the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, uh, doing a pretty good analysis of uh, numerous questions involving the government's official story explaining the attacks of 9-11, which these wars that have been going on almost 10 years now are solely justified on. So, uh, Happy Mother Valentine's Happy Day. Love your, country, love your country. Love the truth. Love your country. Stop the abuse. Standing up for the truth and, and holding Amen. our government to account. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've got problems. These problems are not due to incompetence or inexperience or a government that's too big or too small. We have these problems because those in government no longer serve us. They serve their corporate masters and benefactors and have deliberately chosen policies which harm our nation and our people. Yeah. I've asked the Justice Department to indict members of the George W. Bush administration, including the former president and vice president, as war criminals. They exploited the 9-11 tragedy to deceive this nation into unnecessary and illegal wars of aggression against Afghanistan and Iraq. They abused their power, violated the Constitution and their oath of office. The evidence of their guilt is absolutely overwhelming. Those attempting to take away our rights have cited the war on terror and the attack of September 11th, 2001 to justify their actions. But the entire war on terror is phony. It was planned long before 9-11. The attack on Afghanistan had nothing to do with the Taliban harboring Osama bin Laden. The Taliban had offered to give us Osama for trial. But the Bush administration ignored that offer for two reasons. One, they had no evidence against Osama, and according to the FBI, still don't. And two, the attack on Afghanistan had already been planned in detail before 9-11 to secure the route for a gas pipeline which the Taliban had refused to allow Unical to build. At stake were the profits on trillions of dollars worth of gas from the Caspian Sea. In addition, the CIA wanted to restart the heroin trade, which had been almost eliminated by the Taliban. The attack on Iraq had even less justification. Try as they might, they could not connect Iraq with 9-11. So they dreamed up a new excuse, WMD, weapons of mass destruction. But our government knew there were no WMD. We massed 150,000 troops in one spot in Kuwait waiting for shock and awe to begin. If the generals and admirals had had the tiniest notion that Saddam Hussein might have even one WMD, they never would have massed our troops where they could be wiped out by a single attack. The permanent occupation of Iraq was outlined in the PNAC document, Rebuilding America's Defenses, published before George W. Bush even became president. Its purpose was to provide a military staging base from which to control the entire Middle East and its tens of trillions of dollars worth of oil and gas. The authors, Cheney, Wolfowitz, Pearl, admitted in the document that the American people would never go along with their plan unless there was a catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. 9-11 provided that event. But there is also evidence of a massive cover-up with respect to 9-11 itself. The official 9-11 report, tightly controlled by the Bush White House, amounts to a little bit of whitewash. I've spoken with both Congressman Hamilton and Governor Kane, the co-chairs of the 9-11 Commission, and they both say that there were outright falsehoods in the final report over which they had no control. It was written in the White House by Philip Zelikow. Now, when you combine this with the confiscation 
of videotapes, audio tapes, black boxes, and other evidence by the FBI. It's clear that regardless of who was responsible for 9-11, the subsequent cover-up was itself a conspiracy involving elements of the Bush White House and the intelligence establishment. The American people have still not been told who was really responsible for 9-11. Dedicated researchers have proven that it could not have happened the way the Bush administration said it did. I'm an old interceptor pilot. <laughs> Hijacked airliners do not fly around for an hour and 40 minutes without being intercepted, unless our air defense system was sabotaged, and that's something 19 Arabs with box cutters couldn't have done. Indestructible black boxes, and by the way, they're not really black, they're bright orange, but never mind. Indestructible black boxes do not evaporate in the same fire from which an unharmed passport floats to the street below. Steel skyscrapers do not collapse at free fall speed because of a kerosene fire. Steel buildings do not collapse at all because of a kerosene fire, never have and never will. And a kerosene fire does not turn concrete into a powder containing particles of nanothermite, a military explosive used in controlled demolitions. And of course, Building 7 wasn't even struck by an aircraft. Yet about 5.20 that afternoon, about 20 minutes after the BBC and CNN announced its collapse, Building 7 did in fact collapse, again at free fall speed, in what appears for all the world to be a perfect controlled demolition of an intact building with no visible fires. The truth about 9-11 is that after 10 years, we still don't know the truth about 9-11, and we should, and so should the families of victims. Yeah. President Barack Obama expanded the war in Afghanistan and extended it into Pakistan. And why? He said it was a war of necessity because those are the people who attacked us on 9-11. He failed to reverse the erosion of our constitutional rights and to end the threat of martial law. And why? You guessed it, 9-11. It's become clear that until the government myth about 9-11 is exposed and some real truth told, all these evils will continue no matter which party is in power. I am therefore appointing a commission to conduct a new and truly independent investigation of 9-11. <laughs> it will be co-chaired by David Ray Griffin and Richard Gage and coordinated by my Vice President, Cynthia McKinney. <laughs> You know, it matters not if my presidency is real or fanciful. My part is done. It is finished. The rest is in your hands. The future and the vision and the dream itself depend on you. Each of you must do your part. Spread the word. Keep the vision alive. Drop your own pebbles in the pond and make some waves. Free speech. Speak truth to power. Run for office. Never settle for anything less than a government which follows the Constitution, honors the truth, and serves the people. We the people can win. We the people must win. We the people will win. Thank you and good night.